Hi, I'm Dominic McIntyre, EPS Safety Advisor. Every year the company safety statement has to be updated. Uh, this presentation is going to uh, run through the main changes to the company safety statement for 2019 to 2020. The safety statement is the written document that specifies how health and safety is managed within the company. It is the cornerstone of the health and safety management system uh, and it outlines the risk assessments and policies that the company follows and lays out the responsibilities of the key personnel within the company. Uh, it's reviewed annually or more often if there's a significant change to what the business does or if there's a significant change in legislation. Um, the, the document includes the structure for the health and safety management and we'll talk about the roles and responsibilities for the managing director, the various directors and managers, employees, office staff, uh, the safety management, the health and safety advisors, the various supervisors, uh, and also gives policies and procedures around training, the arrangements for health and safety, safety consultation, uh, and also includes the risk assessments that are applicable to everything the company does. Every year the company safety statement is updated. The changes to the safety statement that you'll see uh, are highlighted in red so they can be picked out so you're aware of the changes but we'll be running through them here in this presentation now. In relation to the structure of the company, the main amendments are Iggy Harren has been changed, his role has been changed, but he's now responsible for small contracts nationwide in addition to his previous responsibilities. And Patrick Buckley is down down as managing or responsible for marketing and communications within the company. Uh, here we have the, 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 the company organogram, where it's all laid out for everyone to see the various line management structures, who's responsible for what elements within the company and which directors are responsible for those uh, functions. And you can see Patrick is there as the managing director and the various directors there below that with a breakdown of their structure uh, for their business unit. <coughs> the main, or one of the main changes we've uh, had to the safety management structure, which is included in the safety statement, is that in the past we had a, an online database for our legal register which laid out what legislation we had to comply with and how we were going to comply with it. We've moved away from that now and we have a legal register that's maintained by the HSQE department and it's on the company intranet and you can see in the um, screen there where it is on the intranet it's highlighted there as ROI legal register. What else has changed within the document? Uh, well, in relation to PPE, there was an assessment carried out at the workshop uh, to see what exposure was to harmful fumes from welding. Welding fumes have been recently recategorized as a carcinogen, so there was an environmental assessment carried out to see what the levels of exposure were. They were well within the safe levels, but as a precautionary principle, uh, just to make sure there's no issues for anybody, Portable LEV is being made available to everyone in the workshop so that if they are welding and they think the fumes are excessive, they can put the extraction on and reduce the levels to a comfortable level for them. The permit to work systems, the in operations, there's an operations health, safety, quality, environment plan that's been prepared, and within that plan, there is a permit to work system and booklet that includes all the permits that need to be used in operations. The risk assessments have to be updated annually as the safety statement is updated. So they were all updated and reviewed. Uh, and the main changes are the risk assessment for roadworks, T15 has been changed and amended because there's been changes to chapter eight, the document that manages uh, roadworks and lays out how it's managed. Also, there was a change in relation to the legislation around diving. So the risk assessment for that has been updated as well. Uh, just to reflect those changes. Uh, <clears throat> also, in relation to the workshop risk assessments, they've all been updated and reviewed. The reference to the general public has been removed from them because no public should be in the workshop. And also, the risk assessments where they mention personal protective equipment, they've all been updated and upgraded following consultation with uh, the staff in the workshop. Other new risk assessments we've added in. Uh, there's one there for the baler that compacts cardboard and paper waste, the cable roller, <clears throat> there's the cable roller for domestic stores, 
The drop leveler for the domestic stores has been updated, that safety statement. Also, we've added in risk assessments for loading and unloading, pump testing to make sure that when we test the pumps, it's carried out correctly to a proper procedure. Power washing, again, to make sure we have a proper procedure in place for that. Managing spillages, because we have had a couple of incidents where people have spilled things, so we want to make sure that that's managed correctly. Uh, we also had a, a significant near miss around a walkway that collapsed on one of the operation sites, so there's been new risk assessments added in the worker height section for working on grid walkways and also for the use of ladders in the domestic stores. We've added in work-related stress as well um, and also the use of vacuum trucks on the opposite on op sites. These documents are found in the health and safety section on the company intranet. You can see they're highlighted there in the red boxes. ROI safety statement and ROI risk assessment is where you can find these documents. If you click on them, they'll come up and you can access them and review them. And we would hope that you would access them and check out all the changes to make sure you're aware of any new developments in the safety management system. If you have any questions or any queries about these documents, you can contact your line manager or anyone or anybody within the HSQE department. And if you have any issues you want to raise in confidence, you can always talk to your safety champion who can bring it to the safety committee uh, in confidence. Thank you.